I was a child during the golden time of Iran, during Shah, and in the almost brink of becoming a teenager, the revolution happened. And then shortly after, war broke out. Shortly after, or at the same time, the Baha'i persecution happened, which basically every day we heard um, the parents of my friends or the Baha'i community member were arrested, executed, abducted. So it was a very confusing, dark time for a novice teenager. Uh, I forever love to play with children and work with children. So what I did since I was 13, 14, I was teaching prayers and, um, and virtues to my cousins, to my little cousins, to the kids in the community. And when I was 17, 18, I was arrested uh, because of this, because it was counted as anti-regime activity as part of the deception. So I went through underage interrogation and beating and all that sort of stuff. And then the second time that I was arrested, I was pregnant. And the third time, they took me with my 10 months old baby, which basically was the, the hardest day of my life. I, I was very adamant to stay in Iran. That was my mother country. I wanted to be there. That day, I decided that if I get away today, the, my parental responsibility comes before what I want to do. So I'm going to take Sam in somewhere safe. And they did, and I came out, and uh, we basically just locked our door, sold our car, trusted the smuggler, crossed the border, and overnight, we became stateless. We crossed the border to Pakistan, and there we went to United Nations. Uh, we went through the humanitarian program. And on 23rd, 24th of June, 1994, we arrived in Australia. And in, it was an airport that I realized I don't know English <laughs> because I was in such survival mode to come. And even in Pakistan, my husband went to learn English but I was taking care of the baby. And I said, you go because you need to work <laughs> when we get there. I knew that the first thing is that I need to learn English in order to be able to communicate with the environment of my child. Otherwise, I would be a blind leading a blind. So then from that point, I started to learn English. And then I was very adamant to to do my education in the honor of my friends who were in Iran and deprived from, from education. All my life, I dealt with the concept of culture shock. So when I was not a teenager, a lot of changes happened in my life through the revolution and war and coming to Australia. Arriving in Australia and not knowing the language, it was that was a shock on its own, a culture shock. But I think the biggest culture shock for me was the concept of choice. I never had a choice before that because of the mayhem that was our lives, post-revolution and war and persecution and all that. I never had the chance to actually sit and think and choose what I want to. And the first time that in English class I was here in Perth, that the teacher asked me, what, what do you want to do for your life? And what's your choice? And it was the most mind-blowing concept for me. Throughout my life, I had three episodes of cl clinical depression. And that was, to me, looking back, was the biggest blessing of my life because through that, I could realize that the difference between mental health and mental illness and many people mix these two. For me, it's funny enough that people get diabetes and go and get the insulin, or they have cholesterol and get the medication. But when it comes to that, they hide it, they cover it. There is a huge level of shame with it. And until we do not navigate that through therapy, then we cannot overcome that. So my three episodes all were situational. 
And so when I could, through therapy, deal with the situation, the depression moves away. And um, so I think the last one was maybe seven years ago, eight years ago. And I use a lot of my experiences. I bring myself to the session when my clients have depression. And, and that gives hope to people that, oh, so you had, the, and I said, yeah, I know, I exactly been through the darkness that you don't want to leave your bed and all that sort of stuff. Becoming a mother was the most life transformative uh, to become a mother that my children need because I believe that the responsibility of us is to take care of each other. But when it comes to our children, we have parental responsibility to always protect them. So that, I think that sense of protection kicked in me when I was in prison with my daughter and I wanted to take her somewhere safe. And then coming to Australia, I did not have any term of reference how to mother my kids in a Western country and how to mother my kids in the age of technology. So I had to be on learning mode constantly. So I went to as many courses, spiritual parenting within the Baha'i community. Did I make many mistakes? Absolutely. So many mistakes I made but the grace of God and um, loads of conversations and making sure that there is not that much criticism. And rather than criticism, we do conversation. And rather than defensiveness, we work together and cooperate. And rather than stonewalling our children because they do some mistake, we actually have compassionate approach to that. So the amount that I learned from my kids and from raising my kids, I didn't learn in any university or any books. Just being their mothers and now grandmother, it's a constant humble attitude of learning. The most important to me is my company. Who is my company? And people many times they say that, Sahba, what is your favorite food? And I say, who am I eating it with? That's very important. So company and good conversations, joyful conversations, elevated conversations, I'm very grateful always. I'm mostly grateful to my grandfather and grand uncles who found the Baha'i faith. Through that, they changed the trajectory of our family because I don't know if I would ever came across it or I was that open-hearted and that open-minded. And they were highly educated and they went through extreme torture and trauma and persecution because they became Baha'i. But then it, it opened up an amazing life, life for me, an amazing way of living for me, which I'm very grateful. Gratitude is very big in our household. So every time that we are together for a meal, before we start our meal, we have to do a quick prayer and everybody goes around the table to say what they are grateful for. Gratitude is the gateway to joy as comparison is a thief of joy. So gratitude is about that sense of enoughness. So the opposite of more is not less, is enough. And we are grateful what we have today. So gratitude is very big for me.